All right, so let's do the next topic with rational expressions. We're going to add and subtract. So um, before I actually add and subtract, let me do this. Let me remind you how to add and subtract basic fractions. Because remember I said that dealing with rational expressions is going to be similar to dealing with fractions. How do you add fractions? How do you do two fifths? or subtract fractions. How do you do two fifths minus um, six sevenths? What do you do? Well, you need a common denominator, right? That's what you need to add or subtract fractions. Common denominators typically, um, well, it is always the least common multiple of five and seven, but any multiple of five and seven will do. So let's assume that the common denominator here is five times seven, well, it is here, 35, which means that this is missing a seven, so I'm gonna multiply it by seven. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, this is multiplication. Multiply this fraction by five on the bottom and five on top. Let's see what happens when I do that. So I have here now seven times two is 14 over seven times five, which is 35 minus Six times five is 30 over seven times five, which is 35. Now I have that common denominator. Now I'm allowed to bring them together. Work across the top, 14 minus 30, because it's all over 35. Keep the bottom and work the top and then simplify. So you're gonna do the same thing, um, the same thing with rational expressions, slash functions, because we could put in function notation or we could put it in, um, you know, just expression. So I can say 2x over x plus 3, that rational expression, plus this rational expression, x plus 4 over 5x. Or another way of asking for the same thing is, let's say, defining f of x as 2x over x plus 3, defining another function g of x as x plus 4 over 5x, and asking you to find the following in um, function notation, this means the sum of the two functions, f of x plus g of x. Find the sum of the two functions. So that's the same thing as asking for this sum here. Say f of x is 2x over x plus 3, and then adding to that g of x, which is x plus 4 over 5x. This is just called function notation, and it means to take the sum of the two functions. So how do I take the sum? I need to find a common denominator. Just like before, the common denominator was the product of the two denominators or whatever common multiple of however many denominators you have. Because in this case, I only have two fractions. I could have more. Um, so the common denominator here is the product of the two. So this needs to be multiplied by that 5x. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top of a fraction so that I maintain its uh, value. And then this one needs an x plus 3. So I'm multiplying the top and the bottom of this fraction by x plus 3. And then I go and do the same thing I did before. Let's multiply it. 5x times 2x is 10x squared over. Sometimes we leave the bottom in factored form. And sometimes we actually multiply it out. I'm going to multiply it out. So 5x times the quantity x plus 3. It will distribute 5x squared plus 15x. Bring down this plus sign. I didn't put them together yet. This is a FOIL situation to multiply this binomial times this binomial. So first is x squared. Outer is 3x, positive 3x. Inner is positive 4x. And last is 12. All over the product of these two, which should be the same as what I did before, because that's the point. Get the same denominator. Then I keep the bottom right? Keep the bottom the same and I work the top. Now I'm going to show all my work. I don't typically like write all this out because I can go straight and combine like terms in my head and all that, but I'll, maybe in the next example, I'll skip a step. In this example, I'm going to show everything. So all over the common denominator, then I'm going to go across the top. I have 10x squared plus all of these terms. So I'll just write it out. Plus x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 12. This is not done. Why? Because obviously I have like terms on the top. So I can combine them. So I have this 10x squared and this x squared, which gives me 11x squared. 
right? 10 of them plus one of them is 11 of them. And then I have a 3x and a 4x, which combine to give me 7x, and then this plus 12, or all by its lonesome. And then that's all over the common denominator, which is 5x squared plus 15x. And the only other thing that I might do is simplify this if it can be simplified, meaning can I factor the top? Can I factor the bottom and get a common factor just like I did over here um, when I simplified rational expression that I can get a common factor to cancel? Um, in this case, it doesn't look like it's gonna deal, you know, happen. So this is my, I almost made a heart. Perfectly fine to do that. I'll do a heart on the next one. But yeah, so this is my final sum of those two rational expressions slash functions, right? And function notation. And this is just an expression notation. So what do you need? A common denominator to add or subtract. So I'll do one subtraction. Um, and I'll do a more complicated situation. Like this one is a little bit more complicated because of the fact that um, I don't have the denominators factor. It's hard to identify the common factor here because these are, ooh, I don't want to multiply these two out. That's going to be some extra stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first um, let's write this on the side here. First, factor all denominators. Factor all your denominators. This is going to help you determine. Okay, <laughs> this is going to help you determine your common uh, denominator because otherwise you'd have to multiply these two trinomials, which can get ugly. So let's factor this one. This looks like a perfect square trinomial, but you factor it, trial and error works. X minus three times X minus three. This one, we'll do a two X and an X, and then product, uh, two numbers that multiply to give me nine. So three and a three. I'm gonna do a minus and a minus because this is a plus and this is a minus. So I want the two of them to multiply to give me positive, but I want my outer and my inner to combine to give me a negative. So let's check it. Two X times X is two X squared. Negative three times negative three is positive nine, that works. My outer is negative six X. My inner is negative three X, which gives me that negative nine X. So this, this is factored correctly. Okay, so what I'll do is, just to make it nice and neat is I'll clean this up. I'm gonna rewrite it with my factor denominators. So I have an X plus four over an X minus three times an X minus three. And then I have minus an X minus eight over a two X minus three times an X minus three. And now I have to find my common denominator. So now you need your common denominator to combine because I am subtracting, right? When I add or subtract rational expressions or functions, I need a common denominator. Now, the factoring part is going to allow me to find it easier with a little less effort than if I had to multiply these out. Know. Um, so let's find it. So this denominator has an X minus three and an X minus three, it has two of them. This denominator has an X minus three, but also a two X minus three. So my common denominator is the least common multiple, the LCM, the least common multiple. What do they both go into? So it has to include everybody, in other words, which means I need another X minus three here because this one has two and this one only has one. And I need a two X minus three over here because this one has one of those and this one didn't. But whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And then I simplify. So, okay, I need space for this. I got some stuff to do here. Foil, foil. This is a situation where, you know, you leave the bottom factored. You don't always have to actually multiply the denominator out. And the reason is because if you um, want to simplify your final expression at the end, you're going to end up factoring anyway. So why multiply and then factor? Keep it factored. Multiply the top though, because you have to combine the two numerators. So let's foil this out. First, x times 2x, 2x squared. Outer is negative 3x. Inner is positive 8x. And the last is negative 12. Um, all over my common denominator, which is an x minus 3. I'm going to say squared, because x minus 3 times x minus 3 
is x minus three squared just to save some space times two x minus three. Bring down that minus sign, foil this out. First, x times x is x squared. Outer is negative three x. Inner is negative eight x. And last is positive 24 all over this thing, you know, should be a common denominator, right? X minus three times X minus three is X minus three squared times two X minus three. Lovely. Now, um, I guess you know, what I'll do is I'll bring these together. These come together, right? Into a, a, um, you could simplify this now or simplify it after, whatever you want, just so I don't have to rewrite it. I'll simplify it after. What I want you to see is, since you're subtracting this whole numerator, that negative is going to distribute to every term in the second numerator. This is very important with subtraction. It does not happen with addition, obviously, because you're not changing the sign. But with subtraction, I'm subtracting this whole numerator. So that negative has to distribute to every term there. So when you're rewriting this part, you have to remember that, you have to be careful. I'm gonna go across the top. 2x squared minus 3x plus 8x, I'll combine them in a second, minus 12. Distribute minus x squared minus minus 3x plus 3x minus minus 8x plus 8x and minus positive 24 minus 24. That negative distributes to every term in that second numerator. That is the difference between addition and subtraction. Subtraction is a little bit extra effort because of that extra piece. The top looks ugly, but it's not because you have like terms. The 2x squared and the negative x squared give me a 1x squared. Oh, cool. I have a negative 3x and a positive 3x. Those will cancel. And then I have a positive 8x and a positive 8x, which is a positive 16x. And then I have a negative 12 and negative 24, which are like terms. They're both constant terms, which is negative 36. And that's the whole numerator divided by the denominator, which is x minus 3, the quantity squared, times 2x minus 3. I will want to simplify this if the numerator factor and if there was a common factor on the top and on the bottom, but it doesn't look like if, you know, if I'm thinking ahead, factors of 36, you know, nine and four, you know, not gonna give me 16. You know, any factors of 36 don't really, it doesn't look like I get 16 with any factors of 36. Oh wait, eight, uh, 18 and two will, but, I will never factor to give me a common factor between these, even though it does 18 and two, I'm not gonna get the same kind of thing. So we can leave it. Oh, wait, sorry. I told you I would make a heart. No. <laughs> for Valentine's Day, because well, yesterday was Valentine's Day, but okay, for Valentine's Day. And that is my final uh, difference, right? Subtraction, it's the difference, gives me the difference of those two rational expressions. And that is all. So what do we need? Addition and subtraction of rational expressions. You need a common denominator. So if you do not have already factored denominators, you need to factor them. And then LCM, these common multiple, and then find the common denominator and then keep the denominator and go across the top. If it's subtraction, do not forget to distribute that negative. 